animation. Also, how to give fish directions with the aid of musical bubbles. And how to rid the world of traffic jams to give everyone their own train. Give everyone their own train? What kind of crazy idea is that? Well, actually, it's a genuine possibility for solving the ever-worsening transport crisis. However choked our roads get, people still seem to think that public transport is too slow and, well, just too public. So here's a futuristic option personal public transport. You get your very own carriage taking you directly to your destination, no stopping in between. Far-fetched? Not at all. Traffic jams, a terrible waste of time, money and patience. On average, British motorists spend five days a year just stuck in traffic, going absolutely nowhere. And no matter how many roads we build, it's getting worse all the time. You know, there has to be a better way than this. And here in Massachusetts, they may have found an answer. Personalised public transport. Please touch your destination. OK, Marlborough. Your chosen destination is Marlborough. Please proceed to the platform. A rapid transit vehicle will be with you in... Three seconds. Fancy. Now, you might think this is an ordinary railway station, but this is certainly no ordinary train. It's a computer-controlled vehicle designed for just a couple of passengers. Now, this looks quite promising. It's a personal rapid transit vehicle, a completely new concept in public transport. All the advantages of a car, but without the traffic jams, pollution or parking problems. Perfect for a horrible wet day like this. It's public transport, all right, but every passenger gets their very own private vehicle. Basically, it's like having your own personal taxi. You don't have to share, you can listen to your favourite radio station, open and close the windows, whatever. These cars travel non-stop to your chosen destination. They don't stop at any stations along the way. They just keep zipping along, ignoring all the other stations and only pulling in when the vehicle has reached your final destination. The leader of the PRT development team is Stephen Gluck. Hi, how you can see it. Let's go for a ride. Oh, they are. Now, these little cars seem fine on a test track, but what I want to know is how they'll cope with rush hour crowds. The capacity is surprisingly high. Uh, the, the, the concept is one that says that people normally flow onto a platform. We're used to trains, line hall, that kind of thing, where when people come onto the platform, we let them gather, and then we bring a large car up, and we take them off en masse, and then we let that group gather again, another group of people, and we bring a car along maybe five, six minutes later, and we do it again. PRT concept says I handle that mass, but I handle it as it flows onto the platform. So as people arrive, they're taken away individually in cars. How much would it cost a passenger for a typical ride? A journey would be similar to what you might pay aboard a bus, might pay for a uh, subway ride. Uh, you know, so fares in this country, in that case, range a uh, dollar to two dollars, something like that. And this is Steve's dream. When it's finished, the first system should look something like this. Construction of this £50 million project begins in Chicago next year. With cars travelling just two seconds apart, this fledgling system will carry 10,000 passengers an hour. And the cars don't follow fixed routes. They always choose the fastest route available. All the controls are on the vehicle itself, so this isn't like a railway track. There are no points or signals. The track's totally fixed, so it's much more like a road, which means that the car has to change direction on its own, and it does that by grabbing onto guide rails on either side of the track. So, in order to turn right, the switch arm down here raises to meet the guide track on the right, and to turn left, the same thing happens, but on the other side. These vehicles are much more flexible than trains. They can overtake each other, choose routes to avoid congestion from other vehicles, and only need to travel when passengers are actually on board. Now, over the years, there have been lots of attempts to get people out of their cars, and most have failed. So personal rapid transit is an enormous gamble for the developers. 
Now, we won't be seeing these cars trundling down Oxford Street anytime soon, but who knows, for smaller towns, perhaps Hull or Plymouth, personal rapid transit could be a relatively cheap solution to endless gridlock. Part of the Singapore Television 12 Network.